Hello everybody and a very good afternoon to you. I can see some hellos and highs. So hello Shashank, Aman, Mohit, Anushri, Aman, Nancy, Tanya. Hi. So good afternoon to all of you and uh, welcome to this webinar. I hope I'm audible and visible. Anyhow, I don't need to be visible. You need to just listen. So today we are going to be talking about things which are very dear to you youngsters. We're going to be talking about the various career options that are available and career options which you can look to beyond, you know, regular college degrees like a BA, BCom, engineering, medicine, etc. My name is Suvira Das and I'm somebody from the insurance industry and I teach at the TKW Institute. I've had a long innings in my working career and now I just like to be with children and to ch talk to them and tell them about what's happening in life. So let me start by saying that you are a very, 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 a generation which is very lucky, much luckier than us, you know, when I was finishing school and joining college, there were very, very few options. You either did a BA or you did a BCom or you did engineering or you did medicine. You didn't think about doing things which interest you. You didn't think about the various options that are available. Many times you just did what your father wanted you to do or what your mother thought was good for you. You didn't think about yourself. I don't know. Maybe we were a very timid generation. Maybe you are much braver than us, but definitely much luckier. So today's conversation is going to center around all the various options, not all, but some of the alternatives that will help you choose what career you can follow. In my talk today, not for once am I advocating that you should not study. You should not acquire a skill. You should not gain knowledge. You must. I'm not saying again that doing a BA degree or a commerce degree or studying engineering or studying medicine is no good. Not at all. It's just that there is so much more beyond all these courses. That is what we are going to be discussing today. That is what we are going to be talking about today. The average youngster thinks like this, you know, doesn't think beyond, doesn't think about his dreams, doesn't think about his own capabilities. You may be a wonderful footballer, can you become a professional football player? You may be a wonderful illustrator. Can you become the next Walt Disney and become a cartoonist? Let us see the options that are available. Let us see the alternatives that are available. Let us see what you can do with your life. The first thing that I would like to talk about is how all of us must understand the concept of dignity of labor. Now, what do I mean by dignity of labor? What I mean by dignity of labor is that you must be happy to do things which may be a small task, a lowly task, maybe to do with cleaning up, maybe to do with cooking, maybe to do with looking after your family. The best example of somebody who has terrific dignity of labor comes from your own homes, your mothers, your sisters, your fathers. They do all sorts of things for you. So when we are discussing this first slide, which is in front of you, we are going to be talking about various avenues, aspects which are available in the technical field. Now, what do I mean by technical field? I'm sure a lot of you, most of you have heard of IITs, which is 
which stands for Indian Institute of Technology. What about ITIs, which stand for Industrial Technical Training Institutes? Now, these are institutes which are run by the government. It could be a central government institute. It could be a state government institute. It could be a private institute. What is the job of an ITI? An ITI teaches you technical skills. Why do you need technical skills? You need technical skills because the country needs technical skills. In fact, this current government is talking about something called a National Skill Development Corporation. When I'm talking of technical skills, it could be a simple thing like a mechanical skill. It could be an electrical skill. It could be learning how to operate machines. It could be getting involved in infrastructure building. Now, what is infrastructure? Infrastructure means developing, building, helping the nation grow. You want roads, you want bridges, you want malls, you want hospitals. How, how do all these things get constructed? Yes, you have architects. Yes, you have engineers. But you also have trained technical staff. Let me see. I have a query. OK. So Tanya, we'll discuss your specific thing later. But let me carry on. So an ITI provides you a skill maybe in the civil part of construction. You may learn to become a builder. You may learn to become to do plumbing jobs. You may learn to become to do electrical jobs. You may learn to do computer jobs. You may learn to work in factories. You may learn to work in factory machine operations. Now, all these are technical skills. And skill development is what ITI teaches. These are institutes which provide both theoretical and practical training. If we shift from the physics engineering angle to the medical angle, when we think of medicine, we only think of doctors and hospitals. That's excellent. But what about all the other ancillary services that are part of medicine? What about nursing? What about paramedics? A nurse is a qualified person. He or she, it's not restricted to women, is taught nursing. A paramedic is somebody who deals with emergency situations. A paramedic is a highly trained person. Somebody has had an accident on the road, an ambulance comes. A paramedic is trained as to how to stop bleeding, how to take pulse, how to resuscitate that person. These are all very, very technically trained people. What about all the people who do our blood tests, who take our x-rays, who are taught how to use CAT scan machines, mammogram machines? These are all technical services in the medical field. All those people who operate these are trained. In my list, I've also included pharmacy. You have a separate course in pharmacy. You think you go and buy medicines, and the person's, person who's there has no knowledge of any medical formulation. You are absolutely wrong. That person has to be a pharmacist. Again, I have included a very, very important person in this list. That person is a physiotherapist. Now, I'm sitting in front of you. About two years ago, I had an operation for my knees. <clears throat> my knees were replaced. The surgery was carried out by an orthopedic surgeon. That surgery finished in six hours, and I was discharged. But then I had 60 days of physiotherapy. And that physiotherapist was a highly trained person who had studied this. So there's a course which is available. There are dietitians who provide diets and rules, etc. You may be a great gym enthusiast. You may be somebody who's very particular about his or her health, why not make this your profession? Work at a gymnasium, train people to become fitter, healthier, teach yoga, teach Pilates, 
teach any sort of exercise. All these are alternative careers that are available to you. All these are highly skilled jobs which involve some sort of education. Let's move on to my next slide and the next topic. I've roughly called it art and design. Now, you may be a wonderful artist. You may have started drawing, painting, coloring, sketching since you were two years old or six years old or eight years old. You may be the next MF Hussein, but it is important for you not only to have that talent, but also to learn more about fine art. You must learn how to make shadows. You must learn how to mix colors. You must know the difference between watercolors and oils and acrylic, etc. So you have so many institutes which teach you fine art, which teach you graphic design, which teach you how to design a website. You may be very good on the computer. You know that you have so much e-commerce happening nowadays. All e-commerce companies involve web designers. You have courses in web designing. You have people who are very good at drawing, who are very good at caricatures, who like to draw cartoons. They can become cartoonists. You can be trained to do all these things. You have illustrators, people who are drawing, who are writing. All of us love to read comics. All of us love to watch cartoons. They are a highly technical job to actually have a cartoon film, you have to learn to be an illustrator. You must learn how to animate. I'm sure you have heard of the word animation. So all these are different, different types of disciplines available in the art and design field with some technical know-how. A lot of designing nowadays is done on the computer and you youngsters are so good on the computer. You are far, far superior to us whose computer knowledge is very, very poor. When we are talking of designing, we can talk of fabrics. We can talk of clothes. We can talk of jewelry. We can talk of furniture. We can talk of designing offices. We can talk of designing hotels. I'm sure you have heard of the word interior design. Now, interior design is a very, very technical skill. You must know where the light is coming from. You must, some people are particular about Vastu and Feng Shui. You must follow all those norms. You must see that the division that you make is made out of wood and that wood can be painted. Some people have different tastes. So you have to learn all these various possible designing possibilities. So we're talking about designing. We're talking about designing with an with a paintbrush, we're talking about designing with a computer. We're talking about generally the arts and crafts field. Look at jewelry. You can have precious jewelry where you're dealing with diamonds, where you're dealing with rubies. You could have semi-precious jewelry. You could have metal jewelry, silver jewelry. It's all very, very, there is everything to be known and everything to be learned by taking courses in jewelry design. Nowadays, beauty, makeup, hairstyling is a very important part of life. Now, again, this is not restricted to girls or young women. This is available to everybody. You have salons and you have uh, places like VLCC and all sorts of places where you have qualified persons who work there. You cannot have anybody performing these tasks. They are all trained people. They are all people who have studied. They are all people who are uh, in the knowledge of, of beauty and makeup and hairstyling. You can be taught how to do bridal makeup. You can be taught how to put mehendi. So these are all skills which you may have in you inherent, but 
which can be developed by doing these courses. These courses are available. They are available at various polytechnics all over the country. And very, very important. You may think that it sounds frivolous, but it's not because you have beauty, makeup, and hairstyling all over the place. This could include, if you have done a little bit of diet study, you may include weight loss. It may include yoga. So what are we doing? We are combining two types of skills and offering them to customers. This leads us to the huge fashion industry. You have fashion designers, but those fashion designers have very, very large people who work for them, a large group who works for them. Somebody does the makeup, somebody does the hairstyling, somebody does the arrangement of clothes. So we call that fashion management. These are courses, again, which are offered and are very, very interesting, may suit some of you. Arranging a fashion show, arranging an exhibition, opening stalls in a mall. All this now we refer to under one umbrella and we call this event management. What is event management? You learn how to manage an event. It may be a wedding. You may be the event manager. You have to manage all the ceremonies, all the decor, all the flowers, all the uh, bridal makeup, etc., etc., etc. So all this is an alternate career, and all this is a very interesting alternate career that you youngsters can follow. Hospitality is a very large business. We see hotels, restaurants at every nook and corner. It's not easy to run a hotel. It's not easy to have a successful restaurant. You have to be somebody who's trained. You may do a course in hotel management. The course in hotel management teaches you how to manage the affairs of a hotel. A hotel basically is looking after guests. It's looking after food and beverages. A hotel management degree teaches you how to manage the front office and the back office. It teaches you housekeeping. What is housekeeping? We are talking about looking after the cleanliness, the sheets, and various other aspects that run into running into a, running a hotel. Courses in hospitality are available aplenty. Courses in hospitality also include a huge part which you and I call FNB. FNB stands for food and beverages. You may love cooking. You may be an outstanding cook. You may learn how to become an outstanding cook. You can join a cooking course. You may not join a cooking course. You may join an existing chef and become that chef's apprentice and acquire what I have listed here as culinary skills. So all this together comes under the hospitality services that are available, that are that you see all over all cities, all towns, and which need young, fresh, well-qualified, well-heeled youngsters like you. Hospitality is not restricted only to hotels and restaurants. You need to be extending this service if you are in the field of travel and tourism. What is travel and tourism? Most travel and tourism operators have now become sites. You have heard of ClearTrip.com, MakeMyTrip.com. You've heard of Trivago. What do they do? They are trying to help you in arranging a tour. You may be going to Banaras, or you may be going to Singapore, or you may be wanting to have a tour of a religious tour to Badrinath. So these 
travel and tourism companies or websites or whoever they are, they need qualified people who know how to arrange these things. Again, hospitality extends into the aviation sector. When I'm talking about the aviation industry, I'm talking about aircrafts. You have to learn to become an air hostess. You have to learn to become a, a purser. You have to learn to become a ground hostess. Yes. Now, these are all jobs where a lot of young people are required. These are a lot of jobs where young people have to be trained. And we need to have all of you, if this is what you think you are good at, trained for that. So hospitality and what it needs, what it means when you are in that sector. Now, this is something that all of you are very familiar with. I'm sure you have got autos and taxis and cars and you find, uh, you know, Kurafati Nitin and Anu Kapoor, who are RJs, who are VJs on TV. It's all part of the media and entertainment industry. They have to learn all this. If you want to become a television anchor, if you want to become a journalist, you have to learn to study this part of the industry. So we're talking about television. We're talking about radio. We're talking about films. All of us love films. When we think about films, we only think about the actor and the actress and the director, maybe the producer. All right, these are important people. But what about all the technicians? What about all the people who are involved behind the scenes? They're all highly trained. They're all technically qualified. Next time you see a movie and it comes to cinematographer, you'll find against that person's name, there'll be a degree. That person has studied how to operate the camera. Somebody does special effects. That person is taught how to do special effects. Somebody looks after the lighting. Somebody looks after the sounds. We are talking about mixing. These are all part of the media and entertainment industry. These skills are highly, highly technical. In fact, <clears throat> we in India have, have one Oscar winner who I think his name is Rasool, Rasool Pukuti, who is somebody who has done sound mixing and he's won an Oscar for it. So media and entertainment, television, this is not restricted to the English speaking audience. You have media, entertainment, television, films in all the languages, most of the languages in our country. You need technically qualified people, whether they are making a Bengali serial or a Tamil movie or a Bollywood movie. So go ahead and choose this field. Very interesting, very tough work and a lot of specific study for media and entertainment. So we are talking about radios, televisions and the jobs that are associated with that. Now, these are names that you are familiar with. I just wanted to tell you, maybe I'm a little older than you. I've traveled a little more than you. If I take an Uber in San Francisco or in London, I find that my Uber driver is a young student. You get chatting with him or her. He owns his car. He's studying to be an engineer or a doctor or a whatever he wants, but he's also augmenting or adding to his income by driving an Uber taxi. So there is nothing small or belittling about this. You order a pizza. There's a young fellow who comes and delivers your pizza. He's also a student. Yeah. We have all these companies which are now in our country. We have all 
we enjoy ordering pizzas and taking Ubers and Olas and ordering through Swiggy or Don Zomato. But we feel that working for these places is something below our dignity. Not at all. I'm not saying you do this as a full-time job. Maybe you could take this as a part-time career. Whatever you earn from this, use it to study. Use it to realize your dreams. Use it to figure out where it can be used even better. So if you like flying planes, study to be a pilot. Very, very skilled job, very highly paid. So service providers, logistics providers, these are all services. These are all stopgap jobs which are available aplenty. These careers may or may not be full time. They could be part time to start with, but definitely a choice which is available to you. There are several options that are available. The first one here is what I've called defense and paramilitary. Now, when I'm talking about defense, we're talking about the Army, Navy, Air Force. After finishing school, you can write the NDA exam. It would qualify you to become an officer in the defense services. It's an excellent option. It's an excellent job. You have a great sense of pride working in the defense services of our country. You get good salaries, you get good perks, you have a good status in life. Defense also includes the next cadre of people. You could become a Navy seaman. Yes. Paramilitary forces, there are so many in our country. And they're excellent jobs. We keep hearing about our paramilitary forces in Jammu and Kashmir. We hear about them fighting terrorists. We hear about them performing rescue operations in Kerala during the floods. Who are these people? They're people who are working for the CRPF, Central Reserve Police, CISF, Central Industry, Industrial Security Force, BSF, Border Security Force, Border Roads Organization, Indo-Tibetan Border Police, State Police. All these come under this large gamut of defense and paramilitary. These are wonderful jobs. These are career options which give you a very good purpose and status in life. Yes, you have to be of good health. Maybe you have to be some certain feet tall and in some good, robust physical condition. But that's what you are. You're all youngsters. So some of these are government jobs. Some of them may be what we call short term commission jobs. You may be somebody who's wonderful at sales and marketing. You have short term courses which offer you jobs in sales and marketing. You have people who are good at PR or what we call public relations. What is public relations? Public relations is learning how to deal with the public, how to advertise, how to sell, how to propagate. Very important job, back office, secretarial. Every office needs the office to function. And who helps there? We are talking about the secretaries. We are talking about people who are doing work, what we call administrative jobs. Are they qualified? Of course, they're qualified. Have they done courses? Yes, they've done courses. So we are looking at all sorts of options that youngsters like you should be open to following. I already talked about this. Maybe your passion is not cricket. Maybe it is football. Maybe it is hockey. Maybe it is 
Coco. Can you become a professional Coco player? Of course. Maybe you can become the next Sindhu and become a professional badminton player. Is this a career option? Of course, it's a career option. You have scholarships for sports. You have to be, of course, of some reasonably high caliber. You could become a professional sports person. And India currently is really emerging out of the only cricket scenario. We have very good sports people who are runners. We have very good sports people who are badminton players. We have very good sports people who are winning gold medals in wrestling and boxing. You've all heard of Mary Com, etc. So a professional sports person may not be too many, but definitely if that is your passion, follow it. See how you can follow it. See, find out whether there are scholarships available, whether there are reserved seats available where you can study as well as pursue your passion of sports. Maybe some of you are already following that and you could get into coaching of sports. I'd like to end by laying emphasis on the options that are available where you as youngsters can help in the field of education. Education, we only think of a B.Ed, a Bachelor of Education. Who, what does a Bachelor of Education do? It's a degree which we normally do after a regular B.A., B.Com, B.Sc where we are taught to teach in school. Now, you have a lot of courses which are currently offered also by Delhi University, also by other universities, where you can be teaching elementary school education, where you can do a Montessori course, where you can do a primary teaching course. These courses are recognized. These courses help you getting jobs. If your passion is to teach, like my passion without a degree, unfortunately, is to teach now. So teaching gives you huge options. Teaching gives you a way of connecting with the youth, with children, of shaping them, of teaching them, of bringing them up to your level. And for that, you need to study, you need to do these courses, you need to become what we call trainers and teachers yourselves. If you have a flair for foreign languages, excellent. The most popular foreign language nowadays is Mandarin. Everything seems to be happening in China. In any case, Indians are very good with languages. We have so many regional languages of our own. You could study foreign languages. You could become translators. You could get jobs in the trade and commerce field if you study foreign languages. And these are all highly paying jobs. But again, you have to be qualified. So I think we have gone through a very large variety of career options by no means have I given you a complete exhaustive list? No, no. There is so much more to do. But do not think that you can't do anything beyond a BA or an engineering. You can do what gives you passion. You can do what gives you satisfaction. So think out of the box. Think big, think confidently, go out into this world, prepare yourself, do things that would give you satisfaction and qualify yourself to becoming that. You could be a painter, I repeat, you could be somebody operating a machine, you could be the next print or TV journalist. But prepare yourself to be that. Things don't just fall into your lap. You've got to study. You've got to do those relevant courses. 
you've got to make yourself up to that standard. So thank you very much and all the very best.